Hi folks, we're going to take a look at the uh, solutions to the uh, first factoring quiz that we did. Okay, so let's start with the first one here. So we see a trinomial, so we're going to try to factor this as the product of two binomials. Okay, now as I suggested before, I'm going to suggest you don't uh, use decomposition to do this, especially since looking at those two terms, the 3 and the negative 5, since they're... Um, uh, since they're prime, makes things a lot easier. So you know that in order to get 3x squared, that's going to be the product of these two terms. Okay, so we know we have to have 3x and x. Okay, the only trial and error we have to do is are we going to have a 1 here, a 5 there, or the other way around. Okay, now one way to represent that is using the little chart on the side. So here, if I represent these two coefficients, 3 and 1 is my first column, I can either multiply the 3 to 5, if I put that there, so I'll put the 5, and the x by 1, okay, and I represent that possible multiplication as 3 times 5, 1 times 1. The other option is to put 5 and 1. That means I'm multiplying 3x by 1. I represent that by this uh, line, and I'm going to be multiplying the 1 by 5, okay. So it's either the horizontal lines or the crossed lines, okay? And here, if we look at 3 times 5, 15, okay, and 1 times 1, that combination will help us get the negative 14. So we need negative 15 plus 1, okay? So that means I'm going to do 3 times negative 5, okay, and x times positive 1. And there's my uh, factorization, okay? Now again, you may not have to use this chart, especially when they, they are uh, uh, prime numbers like this. You can probably just do it in your head, okay? But as you get used to this method, it's much, much quicker. Okay, let's go on to number two now. First thing to notice in any question, okay? Now I just sort of skipped it here because I could see very clearly that there were no common factors. The first thing you always want to do is look for a common factor. And here we got a couple because we have a common factor of four, and we have a common factor of x to the power of 4, okay? And what we have left, 4x to the 4 minus 1, is much simpler uh, to work with, okay? Now, of course, you look at this here, and I hope that you're recognizing this as a difference of squares, okay? So this is like 2x squared squared minus 1 squared. Again, I wouldn't normally expect you to write this down. This is more for people who are uh, might still be struggling with these. Okay, so 4x to the 4, and the factorization of any difference of squares is just the first plus the second times the first minus the second. So 2x squared plus 1 and 2x squared minus 1. Okay, now again, take a quick look. This might possibly be a difference of squares, but 2 is not a perfect square. So that's as far as we go for this one here. Okay, let's move on to number 3. Okay, now this is a trinomial. It's not a quadratic trinomial, but we can think of it as a quadratic trinomial and reuse the same methods as we did before. Okay, so again, some people don't need to do the step that I'm going to do here, but one thing is to think, well, how can I write this as something squared, okay, to make it look like a quadratic trinomial? And we realize that that's x to the 6 squared, okay? Now, the reason why this is going to work is because the middle term is also x to the 6, okay? So another way of thinking of it is doing this little change of variable. Think of x to the 6 as being represented by some other variable, say z. So z squared minus 10 plus 9, sorry, 10z, okay, where z represents x to the 6. This now becomes a very easy trinomial to uh, factor, okay, because this now becomes just two numbers that multiply to positive 9, add up to negative 10. So z minus 1, z minus 9 will work. And so now, I want my answer to be in terms of x. So let's replace, wherever we see it, z, we're going to replace that by our x to the 6. So x to the 6 minus 1, x to the 6 minus 9. Okay? 
And so here, I look at these two, do a quick check, and realize that these are both differences of perfect squares. So I can keep going. So let's keep going here. x to the sixth is like x cubed squared. So the factorization of the first one will be x cubed plus 1 times x cubed minus 1. Okay, and then we look at the next one here. This will just be x cubed uh, plus 3 times x cubed minus 3. Okay, and here we have our full factorization. Now later on we'll actually see that there are all rules for difference of cubes, which this is a difference of cubes, and a rule for sum of cubes. Okay, but for now with what we know we can leave the factorization as it is there. Okay, let's move on to number 4. Okay, and again, a lot of the tricks we use for factorization is, uh, starts with recognizing uh, typical forms. Okay, so anytime you see a cubic expression okay, with all four terms, you should be thinking about the grouping method. And the way the grouping method works is you group together the first two terms and you group together the next two terms. Okay, and now we factor these binomials individually. Okay, so we'll start with factoring the first two terms and we see that they have a common factor of 4x squared. Okay, when we factor that out, well we're just left with an x in the first term and here we're left with a minus 5 in the second term. Now in order for grouping to work, I need to recreate this x minus 5 in the next two terms. So let's see if it works here. So we need an x minus 5. Here the coefficient uh, is negative 9x. 45 is also divisible by 9. But I'm going to factor out a negative 9 so that my resultant in the bracket is going to be a positive x. So here that gives me x. And here 45 divided by negative 9 is negative 5. Okay, so here grouping is going to work because I now have, in these two terms, a common factor of x minus 5. So I remove the common factor of x minus 5 and we're left with in the first part 4x squared and in the second part minus 9. Okay, so this is how grouping works. The first two, the last two, factor each pair individually and if you end up with a common factor in brackets, you can keep going. Now hopefully you're also noticing, hey, wait a minute, 4x squared, that's a perfect square. 9 is a perfect square, so I can actually keep going here. Okay, so here, x minus 5, okay, and here this is like 2x all squared, okay, and this is 3 squared, so 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. And there we go, that's as far as we can go. Okay, so let's move on to question five. Okay, and this is something we've already discussed. So there's different ways in which you can define a function, but what I would like to specify here is that, well, a function, first of all, is a relation. So let's describe what a relation is. And of course, it's a relation where the uh, input is uh, assigned to only one output. So one way of writing this would be a function okay, is a set of ordered pairs okay. Now instead of talking about input and output it will be a little quicker to write x and y so I'll show that I my ordered pairs are represented by uh, this uh, pair x, y Okay, so this tells me that yes, it is a relation, okay, but now I need to specify that uh, where for each x there is only one y value. Okay, so this would be one acceptable answer. Okay, you can definitely write this in many different ways. Okay, let's move on to numbers uh, 6 and 7, and this is just a review of how we operate with, um, uh, with rational expressions. Okay, now rational expressions are essentially fractions that just happen to have variables in them. Okay, and so we 
generally use the exact same uh, methods as we do with fractions. Okay, so here since I'm adding, I need to find a common divisor. Okay, now this is where you need to be careful because as you would do with regular fractions, you want to find okay the lowest common divisor. So you could use x squared minus 1 times x plus 1. That is a common divisor, but it's not the lowest common divisor. It makes things more complicated. So the first thing that you really should be doing when you're operating with rational expressions is factoring all the terms that you can. So here, when we factor x squared minus 1, we have x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. And here we see that there is a factor that's common to both. We don't have to take this factor two times. We only have to take it one time. Okay. So my common denominator here is just going to be x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay. The first fraction already has these two factors in their denominator. So the numerator doesn't need to change. Okay. But the second fraction only has the x plus 1 uh, factor in the denominator. So in order to get the denominator x plus 1, x minus 1, means I have to multiply the denominator by x minus 1. But as you would do with a regular fraction, means I also have to multiply the numerator by x minus 1. Okay, And this is how we perform our addition. Now, of course, it's expected that you're going to simplify this. Okay, so here 1 plus, let's distribute, so x squared minus x. Okay, and it is expected that you're writing uh, any polynomials in uh, the traditional form, which would be the highest power first. So we really should write this as x squared minus x plus 1 over x plus 1 x minus 1. Okay. Now often we'll state any restrictions on the um, on the expression. Um, not don't necessarily need to do that here. I'm just asking you to simplify it. Okay. But of course x can neither be negative 1 or 1. Now another thing that you should look for is can the numerator be factored to see if you can simplify any further. And you look at this trinomial and it won't factor. Okay. So that's as far as you can go. That's how you'd leave your answer. Okay. Similarly here, we have a multiplication. So we multiply them in the exact same way that we would two fractions. Okay. Multiply the two numerators and multiply the two denominators. But with multiplication, keep in mind that you can simplify before performing the multiplication. Okay. And when you do that, it simplifies the whole procedure. Okay, and it also ensures that your final answer would all, will automatically be simplified. So yet again, the first step is to factor any polynomials that you can and then see if any simplification can be done before going ahead and doing the multiplication. Okay, so let's do the numerator here. So two numbers that multiply to negative 2 add up to negative 1. So that's going to be negative 2 and positive 1. Okay, because negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Okay, don't forget to look for common factors. So here you have 3x plus 6, but those are both, both terms are divisible by 3. So that can be written as 3 times x plus 2. Okay, and times. Here we see that there again, there's a common factor of 2. x plus 2. Hey, that's very good. Okay, and then the denominator, nothing to do here. So remember I talked about simplifying before multiplying. Okay? You can simplify any factor in the numerator. Okay? And remember we're talking about a factor, so something that's multiplied, with any factor in the denominator. So here we see that this factor of x minus 2 reduces with the factor of x minus 2 in the denominator. This factor of x plus 2 here reduces with the factor of x plus 2 in the denominator. And so what we have left, now we will multiply. So in the numerator, all we have is 2 times x plus 1. Okay. And in the denominator, the only thing we have left is the 3. Okay. And there you go. 
this would have been much more complicated to attain if we had just multiplied these terms and then try to factor afterwards. Okay, now by the way, whether you leave this as 2 times x plus 1 or you distributed this as 2x plus 2, either is, um, is acceptable. Okay, now notice here if we were stating the restrictions, looking at the final answer doesn't look like there's any restrictions in the denominator. But remember that you have to keep whatever restrictions uh, were there right from the beginning. So x couldn't be equal to 2 and x could not be equal to negative 2 which makes the original uh, expressions uh, have a zero in the denominator. Okay, so here's a quick review, and uh, if you still have any questions,